Well, the years passed with the rising of empires and the fighting of wars. And most in the great city forgot Clear, with her white skin and dark eyes. Even her memory in her mother's eyes faded. She knew she had a daughter, and she remembered an old sadness. But life goes on. So it was, she and Xenophon never had another child. Rather, they turned their great house into, as it were, a guest house, where they would entertain the young men who fought wars and wrote in those far-off days, who studied long, thought hard, but always went back to war. Now, one time, there was staying with them in the room that had once been clear. A young man, a handsome young man, called Magastar. Now, he was one of many such men who they fostered, and some had stayed long time and some had stayed short. Some had fled into the night, and some had vanished and not been seen again. But Magastar seemed happy enough. He had been there a few weeks, when the one servant, Pema, who remembered Clear came up to the room where he was sleeping. It was her job to wake him before dawn was his was what he always said. So that he could get to the gymnasium and train for war and then go to the library to read for he was a scholar soldier. Well Thema came up one time to the door. But there seemed to her as she listened, a noise on the other side of a door, like a woman's voice. And Thema thought to herself, no, that's mighty peculiar. I guard the door here, and there's been no woman come up. And anyway, I didn't know Magister was, was, was like that. I don't like to enter. <laughs> I guess I ought to check. And so, as any good servant would, she peered through the keyhole to see what was inside. And what she saw, by moonlight, skin shining bright, eyes as dark as coal, lips as red as blood, unsettled her more than she could say. Although to be truthful, she could not quite put the image she saw into words. Rather, she fled down the hall to where her mistress was sleeping. And she knocked. Wake up! Wake up, it mistress! There's some in her foot! Now Hera, particularly when Xenophon was away, as he was at that time, was always rather slow in the mornings. And it was still dark. And she slept on as the little servant knocked and knocked and knocked upon the door. Waking up only muzzily, what is it? There's something, there's something in Magistar's room. Somebody. Leave him be. He's a grown man. But, but, you, but there's something wrong, I tell thee. And with much chivying, just as the sun rose with its hot African heat, Hera came up to Magistar's room and knocked cautiously. Well, there was nobody answered the door. And so she very gently opened it. And there was Magister, lying on the bed, his throat and chest exposed. His neck a little red, but there was no obvious mark of blood. It looked rather like someone had sucked it. And his hand, his right hand, was clasped tight shut. As they came in, he woke up and he looked as one who had come from the deepest of sleeps. And he said, w -w what's wrong? And Thera turned to Themar and said, yes, what is wrong? What are we doing here? And Themar said, it's like this. There was a girl here, eyes as dark as Persephone's, skin as white as moonlight. Even though she lay in the shadows, hair as dark as the night sky. 
and Hera was just about to accuse Thema, saying, yes, that was moonlight. When Magistar started and said, what? What? Can you see into my dreams? Or is it you that leaves the gifts? What do you mean? Well, the last two nights I have dreamed of a girl such as that. And she has lain upon me in the night. And when I have woken up, my hand has been clasped. And as they watched, he unclasped it slowly. As if he had to will the fingers to move. As if another will worked through his hand. And he opened up his hand. And he held up a golden signet ring. And said, you see, whoever it is leaves me gifts. And when she saw that ring, Hera screamed. What? For she knew it. It was a signet ring from her own mother, and from her foremothers before her, back into the days of Philip and beyond, back into the old days in high Macedonia. And she had put it on her daughter's hand, without her, father, without her husband's knowledge, in memory of her daughter's life. What was the other thing you got? she said. And Magistar showed them. It was the headband, said with rubies. The headband she had bought her beloved child. And when Hera saw that, she screamed again and said, What will we do? It is my daughter who is visiting you, who's been dead nearly twenty years now whose memory we had all but forgotten.